You're there in the shower naked. I yep. am the one. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine going through Margaret Thatcher's knicker drawer upstairs. You know when they sneak <laughs> up upstairs and come dine with me. I've got this sort of optimum way of pulling on a night out. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Two Pals on a Pod, episode 52. This week we're going to be talking life hacks. Now, what do we mean by life hacks? We mean things that can improve your life, essentially, okay? An example of this, I'm going to just hit you with one straight off the bat. Okay. Best place to take a dump in Leeds city centre. Okay. <laughs> That's a weirdly specific one for anybody that happens to be from Leeds. And uh, it is, or travelling through Leeds, perhaps. Yep. Passing through. Exactly. You Leeds, may passing be... through Leeds. Passing through. Leeds. Yeah. You may well be going to see a friend at uni or something like that. You're travelling around the country. Oh, let's go Leeds and you know see a friend or whatever. So if you are going to take a dump in Leeds, this is definitively the best place to go. And I've got a top three. I've got to be honest. I've got a lot of experience in this field. Quiz me oh, about got, it later. Got prism is it? No, it's definitely not. Have you ever done a so, dump at Prism on a night out? Never would I ever do that. No. <laughs> I, I don't even want to go to the toilet full stop in prison, no, to be honest. Yeah. I always use a cubicle, but I never have a dump, which makes it sound like I'm doing coke in there. I'm not. I just get mm. stage fright. I cannot use urinals anywhere. I'll take your word anywhere. for it. Definitively the best place in Leeds City Centre to take a dump is the top floor of John Lewis. Okay. Fourth floor. You want to go right to the top of that bad boy, okay? Yep. So yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, two, there, yeah. Right. there's two sets of toilets, all right? So you have toilets on floor, I think it's floor one or floor two, and then you have yeah. the toilets on floor four. The reason why you should go for the fourth floor toilets over the second floor toilets is because of the way in which it's laid out, okay? So if you're taking a dump, <laughs> Right, you don't want to be next to your rhinos and you don't want it to be small, confined space. No. So in, on floor two, you walk in there and you turn right, and then you have two urinals quite close to each other, followed right. by a cubicle right next to it. If you're trying to relieve the bowels, it's quite a confined space, it gets quite busy, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of footfall in and out, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You don't <laughs> want to be in that dynamic. Instead, go to the fourth floor where the cafe is, go in there, and the layout is different in this one. Right. Because you go right for your rhinals, left for cubicles. You're separated oh, right. on different sides of the toilet, allowing you to relieve your bowels without having your rhinal users next to you. There's a clear yeah. wall and there's plenty of space. They're not going to hear anything. It's not going to be awkward. There's a little hook to put your coat or bag on or whatever. And you can sit down and relieve yourselves. If you mm. do it off peak hours, off peak days, like a Monday sort of 10 a.m., like that Tuesday 10 a.m., <laughs> if you do it around that, that sort of time, okay, I'm being deadly serious with you. If you do it around that sort of time, you don't get a lot of footfall from the cafe. Mm. Thus, it's quite an empty environment. So you can relieve thy bowels in a nice, smooth way without any hassle. Because I always have that thing of being out and about and it's sort of like, oh, I need to go, but, you know, I don't really like going out in public, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a sort of, what do you do? You need a safe space. And I think we need more safe spaces for that. Yeah, so I th firstly, I have to come in. I've never heard such a well-structured argument. And I, mm -hmm. I didn't think it would be in favour of using the John Lewis toilets at off-peak hours mm -hmm. as, uh, you know, the best place in Leeds CC Centre to take a dump. So I have to come in for that. Speaking of somebody that's never taken a dump in the John Lewis in the city centre, I have in the Birmingham John Lewis though, which I have think you? since since closed down. But, but I did go to the top floor for that as well. But did I'm you? Not what, sure. what was the layout I don't think like there was there was one, no please. there was no separation of your rhinos to uh, you know cubicles right. or anything like that. that. You do tap into something that a lot of people I think can relate to, and myself definitely is that if you are, as you say, taking a dump in public. You want it to be as discreet as possible. And by that, I mean, you don't really want anybody to see you going into the cubicles at all, doing that. And also, you don't want them to hear it. That, I exactly. Mean, that is a nightmare. This so is the issue with the second floor John, uh, John Lewis toilets. Is as soon as you walk in, you see the cubicle at the end. Mm. You can see underneath the gap that someone sat down. Yeah, I don't like you don't that. Want that. You don't want don't that. Like Give me privacy, please, when I'm relieving the bowels. Which train station was it? Was that in London? London, Victoria it was, where some of the cubicles didn't even have doors on and I don't know oh, okay. whether they were meant to have doors on and the doors have been removed and broken or whether that's just the way that we're living our lives now Sad state I think affairs. that they were meant to have doors because most of them did have doors and then you're the odd one that didn't so you'd be walking along just looking you know checking to see southerners uh, it's grim down dogs, south you know, isn't it they are it's absolutely gris it's an absolute cesspit down they there. steal them don't they down but south you'd be you'd be walking along and they'd be yeah, doors closed doors closed doors closed but this one doesn't have a door on and that's somebody's ass. And they're in a piss. You know, that's not, it's not right. I would say though, if you're somebody, it's not a, a life hack that I had in mind. 
because I don't really think about it this often. But taking a discreet dump in public, are you one of those people then that would put the, the toilet roll down the toilet before doing the dump to alleviate any worries that you would have about the sound of the splash when the yeah, splash the back when the when the when the dump hits the the toilet water you so let's get really that. into this because i quite like talking about let's this let's get moderately into it I, well, really into I know you're not really into this subject but i am, <laughs> so. i have i am indeed tensed up yeah not in that way but i think <laughs> I think for me, I'd like to create a landing pad. What I call, yeah. I've created this perfect sort of art of pooing. I like I that terminology, about, landing pad. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. This has been perfected over many years. So I do this at home as well. This isn't just something I do out about. The do landing that. pad, yeah. Because you don't want splashback generally, I think, would, would be. Oh, a so bad you're thing. thinking of the material splashback, not only the sound, but the actual splashback and the sensation. And, it, yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, yeah. not ideal. So I create a small landing pad. And then the excrement lands in that landing pad, which then guides it into the tunnel without creating a sound. Yeah. And that really just helps, I think, in, in many different ways, but mainly from a sound perspective, a sensation perspective, but also sort of a general cleanliness as well. You don't want, you know, you don't want splashback, do you? It's not ideal. No, I mean, you don't want shitty water on your backside, do you? Especially in public as well, because you're always limited in, in public with what you can do. If it happened at home, you stop in the shower, right? You could, you could absolutely. That's an option, but you don't want to. Not ideal in the middle of the day. Whereas in public, especially in in John Lewis specifically, you're not really afforded that luxury. I'm trying to think of alternate toilets in Leeds city centres. Obviously, you, you say the right this, guy. This is the <laughs> this is the best. Okay, You've got a toilet expert here. I'm not sure whether that's a good. Got a thing list. Or a- a bad thing. You've got a list. I've got right. a list. Right. I'm going to sit back and okay. listen. I don't know how much use this is for people that are from Leeds, but I mean, it's so there's a lot of pe- lot of travellers to the city. To be fair, they will come so, here eventually. Okay, and this will be useful advice. After this, second will... best place to take a dump in Leeds city centre, definitively, Go on. Go on. <laughs> is the cinema in the light. Okay, I think it's the View Cinema. Okay, yeah, top floor. Well, I've, I've been there. Okay, again, off peak times is key. Make sure this is Monday, Tuesday. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, uh-huh. getting, get yourself in there in a regular bowel movement, early morning, let can it you, out. Can you do oh. that? Is that a thing scientifically you, you can do? You get yourself into a rhythm and you get of into course. a habit of pooing? Interesting. Of course, yeah. never, I've never had that. Never. Get into a, a cyclical sort of nature. It's time for it? my 10 a.m. shit. Yeah, some people genuinely have that. Some people genuinely do. Places to not take a dump in Leeds City <laughs> Centre, okay? <laughs> the train station. You are so you are so basic to do that at the Leeds City Centre train station. Sure. Where, okay. where are the toilets in the train station? Next to W H Smith. So oh, you don't haven't used those. No, you're right. Never in a trillion years use those toilets. The amount of footfall they get is ludicrous. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so many people so busy. You've got the urinals right next to the cubicles. Most of the cubicles often aren't even open. There's a lot that need cleaning or damaged or closed for whatever reason. And then you've yeah. got a queue of people trying to use them because obviously they're traveling around and everyone's trying to use those cubicles and take a dump. So you're using one that are heavily dumped on. You don't want to <laughs> be doing that. That's heavy footfall. That's the most dumped place in Leeds. Like don't that. go there. Yeah, I bet I've never no, I've never used that. And also there's some train stations. I don't think I don't think Leeds, they don't charge, do they? No. I'm sure it's Euston Station. I was in, in London, 20p to take a dump. And at Leeds Bus Station as well. At the bus station as well, as if taking yeah. a bus isn't insult enough. So I think there's actually two sets at Leeds Bus Station. I think one you charge for and one that don't charge for, I think. The so <laughs> we've established where to go, where not to go. Uh, I think that's yep. very important. Don't go Cafe Nero, one in the centre of town, top floor. Toilets are terrible there. Unisex toilets, awful. <laughs> don't tend to have too much toilet paper. Really unisex don't Unisex toilets, going. controversial. Viaduct toilets, unisex, aren't they? Um, yes, they are. Yes, I wouldn't go there a bit. There's all sorts going, spiders, flies, all sorts. It's walls, I always think it's always walls. disconcerting if you're having to go downstairs to the toilet. Well, it's like a dungeon, dungeon you don't want to. Yeah. I don't yeah. like that. No, a lot of water on the floor, not a great place to unload the trousers down. Yeah, you know. go, for a, go for a swim, basically, down there. Yeah, not great. Um, good. Your well, first life hack? I've got one. Best place to them. urinate? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so piss is not my passion, despite what people might tell you. Isn't it? What you might have heard. What you There's might have heard. Floating around. Or, <laughs> what you might have heard elsewhere. Not true. So this one, <laughs> it pertains to the bathroom, actually. Oh, good. Your morning shower playlist is absolutely Ooh. crucial in setting the tone for the day. Now, this is something that I realised, and I get a shower every morning when I wake up. It's good varying thing. varying times, and I always have had to listen to music in the shower because I'm thinking that's where I get my best thoughts but I don't like 
the echo in the bathroom, if that makes sense. I've always had to have the music on, right? Previously, I just put on a random playlist and put it on shuffle. But I've realised that music affects your mood. You've discovered this, have you? Right. And it's I, a recent I, I, discovery. I realised this. So then that's when I stopped listening to sad music. So I don't understand this kind of breakup playlist culture. I'm feeling sad, so I'm going to wallow in my own misery by listening to Adele. I don't like Adele. That's probably my most unpopular opinion. You know, if we do a popular Sexist. opinion three... I like it. It's got one good song. I would say one good song. Hometown one. Glory. Hometown oh, that's Glory. A, yeah, it's a good song. It's a good one. It builds, it builds, it builds. Mm. Anyway, I've got no time for sad songs in the shower. I've only got time for songs that boost my ego, massage my ego. You oh, know? God. They've got to have a significant amount of beats per minute. I've got a couple of examples that are on my, that are actually on my play. It's the, it's the only private playlist on my Spotify profile is my shower playlist. Oh, it's God. just pure cheese, basically. Pure cheese. So you've got top of the playlist, I Am The One And Only by Chesney Hall. Which <laughs> used to be, used to be my, alarm to, my alarm song. Oh, no. Uh, You're there in the shower I, naked. I yeah. am the one yeah. and only. <laughs> See, you know, you're like a brush or something. See into the shampoo. Exactly, I can imagine that, like into a exactly mirror. Exactly that. I'm on the last leg of my world tour, and I'm singing "I'm the One and Only," nearly breaking my back, slipping over in the shower. Oh. Songs like that. Songs like "All of the Lights" by Kanye West get you hyped up for the yeah. day. Could you imagine getting in the shower and listening to Adele and just thinking, you know, someone like you and just wallowing in your own self pity and your own water power Not stronger. Not for me, exactly. Not in the for me. club. Not for me. I'm in. I'm in this mindset, this alpha mindset. It's ready to kind of you know go on and hit the day. Hit the day. Such an alpha. You've got to, well, Chesney. Nothing says alpha like Chesney or <laughs> right. That's such I, a great think, song. I don't. And it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. It's the first song I listen to every morning, and I just think, isn't it brilliant to be me? Because sometimes <laughs> the issue, just the a reminder issue, of how great I am. The issue with sleeping is that sometimes you kind of lose touch with how good it is to be. You know, you wake Alive. up. Alive. You might have had a bad dream. Oh, God. Where am I? What am I doing? Uh, right, mm-hmm. I'm awake. It's 8 a.m. Let's hit the shower. You go, I am I mean... the one and only. Think, yeah, no, I am the one and only. Chesney, <laughs> you are right. You are right. So uh, it's a uh, religion. It's routine now. And uh, I, it's not always Chesney Yorks, I must say, unless, unless you know. He's just not on a loop. Though. Unless he needs a number one super fan. Um, but it's songs, it's songs of that nature and songs yeah. of that kind of hype nature, be it All of the Lights, Kanye West, Power by Kanye West. Mm-hmm. Get you sort album. of built up, get you going yeah. for the day, that kind of thing. I, I can agree with what you're saying here. I've yeah. recently sounds, just um, I've recently like started. Joke, but it's actually it actually does shift your mindset. It really does, honestly. I, I can definitely I can agree with that. I've recently got a uh, washing up playlist which shows how <laughs> old I've got. Genuinely started the other day. And it's a dishwasher. Sort of, <laughs> it is sort of like um high, it, I guess hype songs I call, I call kind of call it that. There are a few others which aren't necessarily like that, but generally it's quite high intensity sort of things because then it's making me feel good. I'm dancing around in the washing up, whatever. Yeah. Um, it makes it more enjoyable the whole experience. I forget about the washing up. I'm on yeah. autopilot. I'm in in the song now. I get is to it? a state where I couldn't even study without listening to music, and some some people find that weird and like that scientifically. Weird that shouldn't work and there's, there's a lot of psychological reasons behind the fact that obviously when you're reading whatever you're studying you're reading that in your brain so you can't mm. pay attention to what you're reading and the music as well but i would find that silence in the background would put me on edge and it's why some people either sleep or study with white noise on obviously there's no words with that but i could just tune out of the music have it on as if it were background noise and focus on what i was reading so i just don't like silence yeah, it's interesting because I've never been able to do that. With for me, music, I just get too into it. I mean, I can't, I can't do it. I don't listen to anything in the shower. I just have my own thoughts. I absolutely love it. It's my sort of like meditation. I like, I allow myself to sort of go into different areas, come up with different ideas, and then uh, I don't have. I don't tend to default to music very often. I default to podcasts. So yeah. still having stuff in the background, but it's more like conversational between two people or one person speaking. Uh, so I don't tend to default too much to music aside from if I need to get through the washing up kind of thing. Yeah, I can I can relate to that. I can relate to the podcast thing specifically because especially when you're going through tough times, it's almost as if the people you're listening to on the podcast are there with you. I had a period of time earlier we this are. Year. We are. And by the way, how brilliant a podcast, by the way, if we can play our own kind of film for everything. But I had a period of time earlier this year where I wouldn't be able to fall asleep without listening to a podcast or whatever. Really? It was really weird because I'd never been in that headspace before. I'd had periods of time where maybe the odd night I couldn't sleep, so I put on rain sound or sound of a jungle, sound of waves mm-hmm. and things like that. But I never had it where I, I almost needed to listen to a podcast in order for me to fall asleep because I, I felt as if I was a bit, I, you know, in the dark, felt a bit isolated. Mm-hmm. It was weird. 
I know that was just a phase, basically, but it is. The... I think a lot of people like that, though. I, I was surprised yeah. to hear how many people li- listen to ASMR videos before going to bed. I thought that was like a really niche yeah, thing, I... but it's far more common than I thought. I don't understand. They make me cringe a bit. There's ones that they do, especially with, with the bubble wrap and with polystyrene and with getting really close to the microphone like that. And, you know, exactly just going, like that. Just going, oh, whatever. I don't, yeah. I, I can't get behind that. But it's, it's more sort of like they'll do the talking ones as if they're like a GP and you're a patient. Hello, so. We've done it? this role play um, before. I've been here before. I remember it. <laughs> How can I help you today? You okay, it's that kind of I stuff. I've that. never, I've never done it, but there's a lot of people who are massively into it. They just don't necessarily talk about it a lot. Yeah. They sort of like listen to those TikToks or YouTube videos or whatever. But it's just never been something that's um, captivated me, to be honest. I, I just no, tend I to fall asleep time. upside down. But aside from that, you know, it's weird, isn't it? Because these things do become routine. Because I never have shared the idea of having a shower playlist before with anybody until we're thinking of these life hacks. I'm thinking, going through my daily routine of what I do and what makes things easier and what maybe changes things. And I realize if I wake up and there's some days you have those days where you wake up and you're in a bit of a bad mood or whatever and you hit the shower and suddenly you're just kind of it's, it's almost freeing isn't it? you've got no clothes on there you've got the, the water on your head you've mm-hmm. got chesney hawks in the it's background nice. it's nice isn't it it's it's it's, it's just really grounding in a way really yeah. grounding. so really the life hack there is mindset. get yourself a morning playlist or a shower playlist yeah. gets you in the yeah. mood improves your life so it improves your morning gets you exactly set for the day. That. exactly love that, that. Um, my second bit of life advice, buy art, <laughs> buy, no, buy what well, specifically my this, art. I was going to say, is this just one big kind of plug for your most recent project? I would never do that. I would never no. plug see. it. Um, in any is way that a piece of art or is that you, is that like a cry for help? Blink, blink twice if you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think buy art. It's a fantastic investment. I think it enriches your life. Good for culture, right. uh, great for artists. And I just think it's a really nice thing to do. I think I was in Rome uh, recently, Paris recently, looking at lots of art. It's nice. Some of it's a bit too much. Some of it, you know, there is such thing as having too much art. I think, Jesus. See, did you see that? Then? What, what Pen just went flying. I think it hit the webcam. <laughs> Me. Do you want to do that again? Under attack. No, it's that. fine. Keep it in. Jesus. Um, as in Roman... Something, get that on the blooper reel. <laughs> I was in Roman Paris recently and I was looking at a lot of art. It's nice looking at stuff and, you know, seeing different sort of patterns and shapes and yeah. you can see different things. Art is important. Specifically, my art, I think, particularly is really important. Well, I like your like art. Right, I like... right about now over on my Instagram, I'd yeah. say. Get, um, get, get available now. Eight pieces, limited edition. If, if all that discussion about shitting with mm-hmm. your first life i guess put you in the mood for a bit more shit why not have a nice painting of a golden turd on your wall exactly see of uh of ed chapman right now exactly hand painted i think it's good to it's good to support young yeah. upcoming artists like myself yeah, yeah. and i just think in this industry it's a, it's a difficult industry to get buying guys and i think supporting me is a fantastic thing to do don't you well, I, well yeah i wouldn't argue with that i think what's good for you is good for me if, if people are buying your art that's nice makes you happy you know go on more nights out i'm invited exactly be lovely yeah no i haven't having not been to paris or rome i think they've changed you by the way i think this all this traveling malarkey has changed you i have fraternized before with people that have an express interest in art and they turn by that by fraternize i mean dated and they nope. take me to, to museums and sculpture parks you know i imagine that's your worst nightmare because it's not like a tiktok or something yeah well... <laughs> so it doesn't move does it a bit boring yeah, do you just like Sum this up in like 10 seconds for me. Yeah, there's no dancing. Uh, What's going on here? You lose it. (laughs) No, it was insanely boring. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I remember one exhibition we went to was a giant play area, but for adults. And the point that the artiste was making was, isn't it just a sorry state of how we as adults get socialised into thinking that it's not socially acceptable to roll around like children and throw, um, what do you call the little balls you get in, in... in play areas they've got a name are yeah they balls, they? Uh, yeah the sort of balls? the balls aren't they just sort yeah, of balls aren't they but it sounds a bit wrong kind of balls well wow. yeah must be a name of... for them you know the, well, the, the ball, ball pits, pits ball aren't pits, they ball the ball pit, pits yeah. the ball, ball pits you know we, we, just because you're 21 doesn't mean you can't roll around in a ball pit anymore so you've just got these adults with their shoes off but they've got like shirts and ties on they come after work or whatever just messing around in a ball pit and I, I know that's a, like a very convoluted <laughs> version of art and when you go to Paris and Rome you've got these amazing marble sculptures and when you get Mona Lisa in the Louvre and everything yeah nice and nice ish 
ball pit art. I'm not so I'm not so sure of. And then there's there's one that was basically a big dining table in this in this museum. And that's it. They had a, a plate, and each plate was designed relating to particular facets of females' personality through time. So you had a plate dedicated to like Boudica or something there, and it had Boudica's face on and Boudica underneath and like on a placement or whatever. And it was kind of like a, a feminist tribute to to these women through time. I'm thinking there are so many more effective ways to to you know to honor the memory of these women through time than giving them a plate at the dinner table. I mean you call yourself you call yourself a feminist. Come we on. want to get away from the housewife kind of yeah. ideas, you know, the stereotype. Don't, don't put them in the kitchen. Yeah. And also, I think Boudicca next to Margaret Thatcher, they're going to argue over dinner. <laughs> that, wasn't, that was very ill thought out. From That's an episode artist. of Come Dine With Me, I'd watch. <laughs> watch that episode. Imagine going through Margaret Thatcher's knicker drawer upstairs. You know when they sneak <laughs> up upstairs and come dine with me? I dread to, th- I dread to think. Oh, leather, God. leather. Next one. So I've got a few, uh, a few life hacks here informed by my years as a student and the first one i've got i don't know if i mentioned this before or not is that if your socks are getting a bit smelly and you haven't enough time to you can never shame in my voice already and you haven't enough time to do your washing and you're running out of socks to wear which is a situation that a lot of students find themselves in just turn your smelly socks inside out oh god oh god there we go go on logic tried and tested formula that i've done before nobody's noticed or at least nobody has twigged and said to me (laughs) Aren't those the socks you've been wearing for the past four days? You're still doing it. I, I'm not. No, no, no. I've got time to do my own washing now. I've got time to, but this, this, this was a piece of advice given to me in my freshest week by the vice chancellor of my university, who earns about half a million quid. Oh, so he must. He must be smart then. Authority. They know what they're talking about. If he's rocking up to business meetings with inside-out socks on, just because he can't be bothered washing them. I want, I want that mindset. So I think maybe that's a grind mindset where he's working so hard, he's having to turn his socks inside out to wash them. But obviously, and specifically living as a student, if you're having to share a washer dryer between six, seven, eight people, it can be hard to get a slot to do your washing. Mm-hmm. Alongside Particularly if you don't get up until you know two in the afternoon, like you. Oh, well, that was that was me at uni. That was me at uni. But your socks do begin to start to smell. I'm not saying do this now. If you've got the time, wash them, obviously. Or just do what I started doing and start buying new pairs. <laughs> Ended up with, end with about 12 pairs of socks. <laughs> Jesus. But if, if you're in, if you find yourself in a state of desperation, just turn them inside out and nobody will notice. Yeah, I mean, I'm sort of with you on that to, to a certain degree. I did that whilst I was out travelling. I was like, I'm not going to bother taking pants and socks for every single day. No point. An extra day or two of use. You may as well just turn them inside. Well, you did that in, that in Paris and Rome. Yeah, I think I took. I only, I only had oh, yeah. the pair that I was wearing in <clears throat> Paris, and then I had a spare pair in Rome, and that was it. Interesting. Shall I move on to the next one? Is that your final well, point? I don't know if I. Yeah, we'll go with that. Good point, well made. Like that. I've got this sort of optimum way of pulling on a night out. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> this is this is a lot. Can we address the uproar from the previous episode where you talked about pulling in the club or not? Because I just feel like I need to give these people a fair hearing. But there was a lot of pushback on the idea that you uh, you did pull on that night out when we talked about the night out on the night out podcast. There was a lot of pushback, wasn't there, from from a few critics who there was just don't believe it. There was just pushback from people it. who weren't there. That's 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 the issue. They, they went were, home early. They were in, they were in the vicinity, but they just maybe didn't stay long enough to see you uh, to see you strike swoop in. Um, but the, like a there snake. is a there's a definitive way of pulling on a night out, and it takes a little bit of planning. It takes a little bit planning. of planning. It's yeah, it takes, it takes a bit of planning. There's method method behind the madness. Yeah. So the optimal way of doing this, and I'm pretty sure this is scientifically proven. If not, it should be. Go out with a friend or a partner or you know partner in crime. Go out with a friend who looks similar to you, but is slightly less attractive. Therefore, <laughs> making you look more attractive and actually it increases increases the sort of <laughs> disparity between the two of you. So you've got to plan this out beforehand. Find somebody, make friends with somebody who looks similar to you but is less attractive, mm. and then go out with a duo. And you will find if you get talking to people you are going to be the person that people are going to actually talk to because you are yeah. the best of the two. I see. Thus, you're going to have more success. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. One minute, one minute. It's a who, have been, who have you been going out with, you know, 
as a duo, you and whoever. It's genius. And I hope they're not listening to the. To the <laughs> is this tried and tested? Is this tried and tested? I can either moment. confirm nor deny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, by comparison, that could be very true. I think just by virtue of me being a, a homosexual male, I've got a lot of friends that are female. Right? Oh, okay. I, I should have mentioned it before. I've got a lot of friends that are female, and they naturally are a lot shorter than I am. So whenever I happen to use Tinder, and I've got pictures on my Tinder with the girls, it makes it seem like I'm a lot taller than I am, especially because I'm naturally slim as well. I call it the Rishi Sunak effect. <laughs> so I'm naturally slim as well. It makes me look a lot taller. So there are a lot of people that have said, oh, for some reason, it's not you a lot taller than you actually are. And that's quite clever, isn't it? So it's what kind you're of saying like a relative is thing. become friends with short people in order yeah. to make yourself look taller. That's actually yeah, a great life hack. Yeah, that's exactly. a bonus life hack. We'll talk about that in. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are five four, five five that are looking for, to, you know, for new friends as well. Make them. Bam. And if you're a bit plump, be friends with overweight people, people that are bigger <laughs> than you, so because it makes you look less big. So I couldn't really couldn't possibly yeah. uh, comment on that. Yeah, this but, yeah, is that fantastic. Is, uh, that, that is that is good. There are some so, chubby chasers out there, though. That <laughs> good point. Uh, the bigger the better. So you never know. But at least you're pleasing somebody. Find some ugly, short, fat people to go on nights out with, and you are going to be absolutely fine. Okay? You're never going to go on a night out again with anybody. I think anybody, if you if you try and propose a night out to anybody now that's <laughs> listening to this, they're just going to be like, "So am I the ugly one, the fat one, the short one?" Well, why do you think I go out with you? Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're fishing in different ponds, though. Yeah, we we? we're fishing yeah. in different ponds. But I can see the logic behind it, and knowing about how people think that I'm really tall when I'm not, because relative to a lot of my friends. I am tall just because I'm a man. I'm not particularly tall. I'm five foot ten. But I can see that people maybe make those relative assessments, especially if you and all your friends surround the uh, person you're trying to pull and it makes it seem as if the club's full of ugly people when it really <laughs> There's only me brought, to choose you've from. You've just brought all your ugly people over. Best of a bad bunch. You know? Yeah, there is that. I, could, I like that one. That's quite it's funny. A great little actually. technique. What's your next life hack? <laughs> I'm still getting over that one. Well, I think it's a fantastic bit of advice. Yeah, I'll go for a serious one then to, to kind on, of balance contrast out. with your make friends with fat people type thing. <laughs> if you're listening to this, turn every single one of your notifications off. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here because it's a conversation we've had many times. And it's on my gonna, list. We're probably going to have it again here now. Yeah, it's a, it's a solid one, is it not? Mm -hmm. Just the idea of being instantly accessible to whoever wants your attention in this day and age, drives makes me feel very uncomfortable. You know, the idea that you could be doing something, painting like you've been, plug mm. that again, or, whatever, or doing whatever. Check you... out my Instagram; you can buy them. Yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> the golden turd. I've got my eye on the golden turd. But anyway, we we'll go with the with like, the wallpaper. Going about your business, trying to be productive or whatnot, and then suddenly, oh, phone vibrates, makes a sound or whatever, flashes, notification comes through, and suddenly, just like that, your attention is drawn to the phone i don't think it's right it rubs some people up the wrong way because people think he's got his notifications turned off there must be an air of self-importance it's not that i was putting myself first i think and it, it's not as if i don't go on my phone i check it every few hours or whatever so i will get back to you. it's not going to be days mm. you know i'm not going to be off my phone for days and then pop up and yeah i'm traveling in australia it's done announced you know what i mean <laughs> no you never do that i never do that turn all your notifications off because you don't want to be that person who's just sat by their phone waiting for it to go off in anticipation. I mean, there's 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 even a name for it now that for the disorder of when you have your phone in your pocket and you feel like it vibrates and it doesn't. There's a name for that sensation, and we've really? all felt it. We've all felt yeah. we've got a phone in the pocket. And, oh, I've got a notification. Oh, no, I haven't. There's a name for that imagined sensation now as well, which I think thinks that you know, I think it makes it think makes me think that we've gone too far with this. Yeah, I mean, you've got to bear in mind, these things are designed by some of the smartest people on the planet, these apps, these phones in general. If you think you're seriously able to manage the way that they're trying to hijack your attention because yeah. you're sort of superior to it, and, oh, no, notifications aren't an issue for me, yeah. I see through it all. No, everyone's susceptible to this, everybody. Yeah. You've got to be the one to put it at arm's length yourself. Like in this sort of day and age where everything's so quick, you've got the instant messaging and everything like that, you can easily get so much information. You've got to be the one to sort through it and disseminate what do I want to receive, what don't I need to receive, what's important, what's not important, what's vital and urgent. And so for me personally, I leave open text messages because 
three people text me and that's my parents, my granddad. It's not on, on a regular basis, so it's not going to distract me. And then that is it. All the social media apps are off. Like they don't need to be on because they're just, it's not necessary. Like I'm checking them anyway. I'm on my computer loads anyway. I'm I'm seeing these things pretty quickly. Like I'm not difficult to get a hold of. <clears throat> I don't need to see these things straight away. And I think particularly if you're somebody who's got dozens of conversations going on or a dozen conversations going on, you should not be getting this through all the time because most of the conversations are about pointless stuff. Point that most people have stupid, pointless conversations. That's fine. Have them if you really want to spend your time doing that. But you don't need to be notified of it. Come on. Come on, do you? And even things like streaks on Snapchat with the little timer next to it. Oh, no, mm-hmm. the streak's going to run out. I need to send it. I need to go on the app and keep the streak going. And then, obviously, the more that you build something like that, the more you feel obligated to continue it. Just cut yourself away from, from, from all of that because every, nearly every single facet of these apps is designed for retention, for attention retention, and for more use because more use means more ad revenue for these companies, more interactivity and things like that. So I just think it's best just to completely cut yourself off from it completely, especially because most people check their phones like people used to read newspapers now, either at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day anyway, just as you're about to sleep. It's not as if if you turn your notifications off, you're not going to use your phone. Mm. So unless you're talking to somebody and it's a matter of urgency and you're trying to arrange something at the last minute and you're thinking, well, what time shall we go for lunch tomorrow? And it will need quite a prompt reply. Mm-hmm there's not really an excuse to have them on. No, exactly. I mean, that's exactly what I think you should do is you should turn them on for specific things. Like tonight, for example, I decided to turn on my Twitter DM notifications because I was waiting to see when you got back. Yeah. So and I knew I wouldn't be able to see it because I might be editing or whatever. So little moments like that, and now I've turned it off again, yeah. means that you know I, I'm specifically waiting for certain messages so I'll turn them on in certain avenues that kind of thing that's the best way to be able to manage these sorts of things because you know you have Facebook they actually hired a team of people back in the day to study how um, casinos in Las Vegas kept people gambling in order right. to be able to see how they could apply it to their Facebook platform in order to keep people on the app and Seriously. these kind of things and a lot of it is about giving you notifications but also um, there's lots of different things around how if you feel like you, you're you giving a website more of your information, so if you're made to fill in like your date of birth, your interests, and then your likes, these kind of things, you feel more obligation to return to that platform because you give them more information. So oh. similar to Snapchat, yeah. if you have the obligation of a streak, you feel more yeah. connection, more reason to, to return to that platform. So mm-hmm. there's some interesting like psychological games that they're using as well. And it's like, if you think you can overcome these multi-billion dollar companies who have got infinite amount of resources and human resources and geniuses working on these things to maximize revenues, then it's just it's just not it's not right. You're never going to be able to overcome these things yourself. No. You have to be the one to put a stop for it yourself. Yeah, I've alluded to it before as well, but the idea of not being aloof, but not aloof and not kind of like on another planet. You love that side of things. This, taking, this, is, this inflates your sense of sort of self-importance, doesn't or, it? You love or, this. Or taking days to reply or whatever, that kind of thing. Not that, but that, that. being on tap for people instantly when usually the conversations that you're having are inconsequential anyway and not time-sensitive. So it doesn't matter whether you reply, whether you reply within one minute or within a day at mm. most. There's just no need to be on the what's the, what's the word like on the hook. There's no need, is there? There's yeah. no need to stop what you're doing to reply to this message that you've got from somebody that you could have done when you organically stop what you were doing anyway to check your phone because that's the way people are wired these days as well. And there's nothing wrong with that. It makes no difference whether it's a couple of hours or a couple of minutes. And also it's like, batch processing as well. You may as well stop at one point in a few hours time as you finish doing what you're doing and reply yeah. to all the messages, then get back to work again, then reply to them all at the same time yeah. rather than doing it every five minutes because then you're breaking up the work that you're doing or whatever else. I just think if, 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 if you're applying to messages as you get them, you're playing whack-a-mole, aren't you? Where yeah. that message has come through, bam, Another and then one comes that month's come through and it's, it's hard to stay on top of it all. One final thing before I move on um, oh. that I did want to say is when you do this, I personally found that in the first couple of weeks, I found myself going to the apps more frequently. So it actually increased because I was sort of like, oh, God, am I missing something? I'm missing something. Yeah. And then eventually you realize, oh, okay, you're not missing anything. You don't need to go to them as frequently. No. And then eventually it does curve down. So just be aware of that. I definitely give it a go, though, if, if you are listening and wanting to take any of these things and apply them. That would be the one that I do as like the, the main one, the starting point, the way into this. Turn your notifications off. Yeah. Job done. 
Okay, on to my next one. Okay, oh God, there's so many different ones to go for here. Wow. Be- become friends with attractive people. I mean, what am I even talking about here? Well, that, that is contradicting your last it is, one. Yeah, yeah, this is for different reasons, though. Um, no, we'll, we'll go on to <laughs> a different one. Have friends for different occasions. <laughs> we'll go on to a different one. Uh, get a meal deal from Boots at the airport, not WH Smith's. <laughs> so this is... This, this is, is really... based on the really specific experiences that you that you've had. Yes, but they're very helpful. If you're at the airport, you're traveling around, as okay. I do, I'm a traveler naturally. Yeah. Um, the best place to go to get a meal deal is not WH Smith's. Stop going there. I used to go, oh, WH Smith's meal deal, brilliant, let's go. Though they are their prices are much higher and the quality of the products aren't as good. You don't think to go to boots for a meal deal, no. but if there's a boots there. They are better, they are cheaper, and they are better quality, okay, better options. And more frequently, they will have more options to choose from because everyone thinks WH Smith, oh, let's go there. And so you end up with the shelves being pretty much empty. Yeah. Go to Boots, lots on the shelf, and it's cheaper. Boots, you'll pay £4.19 at the airport. So it's gone up a little bit. It's not bad for an airport, though, is it? But at WH Smith, it's £5.49, so you're paying <laughs> £1.30 more. Five pound forty nine for a meal deal at an airport. That's ridiculous. W H Smiths. That is ridiculous. Boots go there. Better value for money. Better quality. More options on the shelf. And it's usually less busy than W H Smiths. Yeah. Little life hack for you when you're at the airport. Okay. Interesting. Meal deal inflation has been in the news recently because as avid Tesco meal deal fans will have noted, the uh, price of a Tesco meal deal has gone up, hasn't it? it Even has. if you've got a club card. Even for club cards. From three yeah. quid to three fifty and through ninety if you don't have a club card. Absolutely. I'm tripping. never that impressed by Tesco's meal deals either. I don't know whether no. it's because I had mine after I'd done a marathon and it was really disappointing, sort of battered in my bag. But I don't you know. think after doing a marathon, though, you'd be absolutely gagging for a meal deal. You'd be starving. You'd be like, I'd eat anything at this point. And then... No, it was really disappointing, actually, the yeah. sandwich. What did you so, go for? Well, it was, it was always sandwich. chicken and bacon. Yeah, it's always yes. chicken and bacon, the yeah. sandwich. Not but bad. it just didn't seem to be a lot of contents in there. I like I like a Sainsbury's yeah. one. I like the WH Smith's one. Bacon generally. from there can always be a bit bitty as well, a bit too, a bit too kind of solid. I like a yeah. I like bacon that's not being cooked like that. Um, but yeah, good point. Well raised as well, I think. Meal deal inflation is, is a big issue. You used to get one every day at uni. I still can't believe you used to do that. People, people least, wouldn't believe me. It's like the worst value for money thing to day. do. No, it's, but it's it's good for convenience, but obviously you'd have... You are lazy, yeah. At uni, you have the people that batch cook at the start of every like mm-hmm. week or whatever, and they batch cook it like these three meals. That's not you. Yeah, to, to last them the whole week. And they're like, well, this is Wednesday lunch, ratatouille. And this is Tuesday evening ratatouille. Mm-hmm. And this is Friday night ratatouille. And I'm thinking, that's, there's too much organisation. Well, you've got a spreadsheet going or something. You don't, like, you don't like to plan ahead, do you? Not, I roll out of bed at about half past 11 at uni. Pre-Chesney have a beer. pre Chesney Hall. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a vodka lemonade. Shower. I'd have a vodka lemonade. No, but I did know somebody that would do two shots of vodka in the shower. <laughs> what? Why in the shower? I think they shots? had a, quite a problem. Um, well, do you reckon? Yeah, I think <laughs> two shots. Fall, I, would, I would simply fall over and shower. As if like one's not enough though. I'll double up. Religiously, it would be too religious. You know got why. to though. Just get your stuff. No. It's like mouthwash, isn't it? It's like <laughs> mouthwash, really. Know your limit. <laughs> one's not enough. Two's perfect. Three, I think stop, you'd, be, stop. you'd be sloshed. But yeah, I would get one every day. It's just the perfect kind of convenience, like last minute kind of thought thing. And obviously, you can have the banter with the people that you're sat with because they're like, "What meal do you got?" And, there's a big culture around like rating other people's meal <laughs> deals and, and whatnot. And, you know, if Ed was a meal deal, he'd be, you know, plain ham, ready salted mm-hmm. and Highland spring water. You know, Not like, far off. That sort of, yeah, I bet, I bet, I bet. Um, so there's a whole kind of culture around it as well. So meal deals are a popular choice. Anyway, moving on. I do have, I've got another Manchester airport hack if you want. Go on, go on, go on. If there's not enough seats, and if you're waiting for a plane like I was uh, this not this month, yeah, it was this month, um, and there's not enough seats because people are laying down on, at night and taking up loads of seats, and you can't Bastards. find anywhere to sit. Bastards. Annoying. Go out of the terminal and into the sort of where the car park area is. Okay, so there's like a multi-story car park in Manchester. Right. Yeah. There you go. There's a bit where you come out the multi-story car park and you go just before you go across a bridge to the actual airport. There's like a sort of a lobby bit where the elevators go up and that kind of thing, the lifts and everything. Depends which terminal it is. Yeah. Terminal three. Um, I'm not sure what. Terminal three. So there is two seats which are meant for disabled people to sit in and wait for assistance, 
But late at night, when everyone's sat there laying across seats and there's no disabled people knocking about, just sit on bed. Just sit on bed. disabled people all go to bed at eight. So yeah. that's fine. But they've already got the wheelchairs are already a chair. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You don't need another chair. Well, You've you already got a chair. Waiting for assistance. Is there like a red button you can press by the... Yeah. Seat? Oh, that's a bit... Don't ask so, me. I was sat next to that. But interesting. You could sit on the floor, though. There is the... No, grubby. The grubby. <laughs> grubby. It's Manchester, isn't it? It's Manchester. It is, yeah. No, dirty airport. Dirty. Wrong side of the Pennines. <laughs> you find yourself at Manchester Airport. There you go. <laughs> but we'll go on, move on, move seat on. With your, we'll move on. With your WH Smith. No, with your boots. With your boots. It's a great yeah, place yeah. to get take a dump, actually, in Rome. I should have got onto that. But anyway, it was actually a really good place. But anyway, move on. Shit chat. Shit chat. <laughs> I'll say up for the next one. I've got... <laughs> right, my next one is a... Yeah, I'll save the student one for last because it's a bit... No... In order to be productive, make sure you've completely delineated a separate space for your productive activities and your relaxation time. Now, I realized this during COVID when we had these online lectures that basically it was impossible to be productive in my bedroom where I'd literally be sleeping and doing a bit more, obviously. It just oh. didn't feel right to me. What do you mean I'm doing a bit more? Well, to be able it. to, you know, watching, Netflix, a bit more. Watching, watching Netflix, you know, you know the type. You know, the I'm type. a bit more. No, you're just, watch, just watching Netflix is what you're doing. Things, but I find it absolutely impossible to be productive in a space that I associated completely with relaxation. But I also know people that really struggled with the idea of going out to a place that isn't their own personal space, like a library, like the uni library, and working there because they just couldn't settle there so I think it's a bit of a mm-hmm. bit of an issue but for me if I want to be productive I have to be in a space where other people are sat quietly encouraging me to be productive as well because you don't want to be the clown that's eating a packet of crisps in a silent space in a mm. library and whatnot do you I would have accidentally played Elton John out loud in the silent bit of my library once <laughs> tiny dancers but I thought I was playing through my, uh, my big headphones oh, was a nightmare but this idea, and it was a COVID thing, because obviously people say working from home and online lectures and things like that. I saw one tweet actually at the time, it's funny, it was, I can't believe I'm about to graduate online in the same room that I masturbated for the first time. <laughs> really, that really sums up. It really hit home. That really sums up the issue that we have between the, de- the delineation between areas of productivity and areas of relaxation. There needs to be that boundary there, I think. Mm-hmm. For everybody, but I didn't realize it until I was halfway through the year and behind on all my work that what I was doing wasn't working because I was sat there, you sit down with good intentions to work online lecture and whatnot, and I'd end up on Twitter or Netflix. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's definitely something to be said about creating that environment for yourself, exactly. like whether that's taking yourself out of your room, out of the house, whatever. Uh, I think for me personally, like, I've got a desk behind me where I sometimes will do like focused oh, yeah. work, so I will yeah. eat, I eat at that desk. But I will also do like focused work if I want to get away from the monitor and just want to do yeah. something on my laptop <clears throat> where I'm going to be less distracted on my laptop because I don't browse or anything like that. So I will go over there to do like the focused work. If it's some bashing out some emails or whatever, I'll go over yeah. there and do that away from the screen, the monitors and that kind of thing, away from any distractions. So yeah, yeah just having little environments and pockets of space where you do certain things as a general rule of thumb, save the bedroom for sleep and sex, save yes. the kitchen <laughs> for eating generally. Washing up and washing up as and well. Washing up. A little dancing and that just keep these sort of environments sacred for different yeah. things and it's create true. spaces different areas for different mindsets it's a mindset thing because i would have it where when i go to revise for like a levels or whatever or even last year and i was in my dressing gown just wouldn't work because mm. i'm associating the dressing gown with the sleeping and even though it's comfortable and i'm enjoying sitting there and doing work in the dressing gown there is this overwhelming urge just to bin it off and watch tv and relax isn't there so for you maybe not for I'd me put, committed when was the last time you had to revise for anything i suppose there is good that. point there is that but, <laughs> but I, I slap on a pair of jeans do it my tie and sing the national anthem, sing national anthem. and get to work obviously yeah so i like that i like that. it's definitely a good one i uh, have different environments to work in I just think as an addendum to that point oh, because God. there are these these people that are obsessed that i've encountered with productivity and they watch all these productivity youtubers on youtube which i didn't even know was a thing and they're do, learning about all these methods of, uh, of working and, you know, dividing up time and whatever. And there's the Pomodoro one where you work for, you know, blah, 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 a certain amount of time, they give yourself a certain amount of rest and things like that. And they're doing all these things, but they're not doing the basics, right? It's okay doing the Pomodoro method, but if you're sat in your fucking bedroom 
in bed, lay, laying in bed in your pajamas or whatever, you're not going to get any fucking work done. It's about getting into the mindset before thinking about applying these methods. I saw a lot of people struggle with it, myself included, at uni as well, especially because at uni mostly if you're not talking about each other's sex lives you're talking about your degrees so again this is this is just you and your friends is, it, is that is that me and my friends i'm not yeah maybe probably probably i've got another life hack for you here okay we'll do a couple more my final life hack i'm going to do Go is for people that have zoom premium i think they call it <laughs> i think they call it that what yeah 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 yeah. Well, yeah nowhere yeah yeah no, you know, you know what this is heading probably. Yeah, yeah. So for people that have um, premium Zoom and they pay for it, so you don't have to turn off every uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it is. And so you pay for that monthly fee. There is a way of getting it cheaper. So what you've got to do is basically threaten to leave. So threaten to leave them. Say you're going to cancel the subscription of eight ninety nine or whatever. Tell yes. them you're going to leave. There's usually like, if there's an option to tick why, then put because it's too expensive as an option. Mm-hmm. And then as you're going, right, I'm going to leave, 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 leave. Then they'll flash up a, can we keep you for another six months at uh, $2.99 a month? Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. So I've done this twice now. First yeah. time I got like three months at $5.99. The second time I did it, I got six months at, I think, like $3.99, $2.99, $4.99. I can't remember. Oh, they go. They're getting more and more desperate. So it's got even more reduced and for longer. So I've got six months now at an even lower rate. And so this is purely just me threatening to leave. I'm like, $8.99 is a bit ridiculous. I want to keep costs down as much as possible. So let's lower the subscription, threaten to leave, and they will reduce it for you. And I think different companies do this as well because recently – I left my Amazon Prime subscription, or I didn't renew my Amazon Prime I need subscription. Need to do that. They're, they're still fleecing my account. I don't use it. So well. it's like eighty nine pound a month is going up to. I didn't want what? to pay that. Eighty nine. Sorry, not eight. Sorry, eighty nine pound a year. I meant right. Jesus. Or ninety. <laughs> it was yeah. like they saw you coming a mile off. They were charging. Yeah. You. So sorry. What? It's going up from like seventy nine to ninety or something like that. Maybe even one hundred nine. I can't remember. A year. Jeff Bezos wants a new yacht. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't fancy paying that, so I decided not to renew. And then recently this week, I um, was on Amazon looking at how much like delivery costs would be and that kind of thing. Mm. And they gave me an offer, Prime, for a week for 99p. And I'm like, for fantastic. Week? For a week? Yeah, for a week. So they're again trying to tempt me into trying to get the full thing again. But I'm like, fantastic. I've got a few things this week that I might want to get. I'm just going to order it all in this week for 99p. Yeah. I enjoyed this, and I know that it was a quite an effective tactic with like television providers. You know, if you've got Sky or Virgin, yeah, and, all that, and you threaten to leave, they know you're just going to go to a direct competitor, so they start bargaining with you in order to give you a better deal, a more tailored deal. You know, we just watch a lot of sports, so they're like, well, you don't need to pay for the full package, you know, the sports package on a discount or whatever. Um, they really do kind of shit themselves. The anyway, only- I'm not sure why they care so much though about losing the old kind of customer here and there, but. They do. The amount of time my dad's done that over the years. Yeah. Like my the he yeah, loves yeah. doing it. It's like it's the go-to thing. I don't know whether it's all dads or what, but they they love doing it. They'll go, right, yep, yeah, it's gone up. Virgin's gone up this month, right? Let's get on the phone, let's get on the phone. And then they'll complain, they'll complain. It's like, oh, suddenly we've just got fifteen pound a month off the, the monthly bill. And the we've anger, got extras. The anger builds as they're listening to the hold music. Yeah. And then they just let it rip on the phone. And then suddenly they've got this, you know, best deal known for man ever. Oh, we've got a new package now. We've now got 10, we're getting 10 times as much data a month if, now. If these companies though are given sufficient amounts of, <laughs> yeah, sufficient amounts of leeway with what they can offer customers, but they're still charging them the most expensive rates. I don't understand why people that work there aren't saying like, can't we just give them these rates from the, from the get-go? It's like when you go to McDonald's and they fill up the fries, bring like half. I'm like, the person behind the counter, what are you getting out of working for this multi-million, billion dollar corporation? Mm-hmm. Why can't you give me the full amount of fries that I'm entitled to? Why are you only giving me half? You're not saving anything for the, the company. They don't. In fact, if anything, Slip a few more in the bottom of the bag for me. They don't care about you. This is why you should be nice to people working in Mackey's because then they will give you more generally. Really? Yeah, do, I found how, how do I How do I charm these these people? Bit of banter. You know, something. Bit say, yeah, a bit of banter. Say something nice about hey. them. I like, to, I like to sort of have a bit of banter after a night out in a Mackey's because you're all waiting for your orders. There are different numbers. I'll make eye contact with a woman. Actually, last time I was in there, Last time I was in there, in waiting for my order, there was a woman like doing like the conducting it, as I like to say. 
And every time, it's part of your charming. Yeah, you go to like, yeah. Have you ever thought about it in, in, in some kind of loose sense of the word? You are a conductor of what goes on in here, but she loved it. Didn't have she? you ever thought about trying a ponytail? I think I've really worked <laughs> very. Have lovely. you lost weight? <laughs> God, you're looking good. Fifty-two? No, you're not. Yeah. Yeah. But she loves it because you're no. surrounded by all your ugly friends, and like, <laughs> you like George Clooney in comparison. Like, no, know. so I, last night I, I remember I, I did this. I don't know if I ended up getting more chips. If this actually sure. happened, though, we know you're quite liberal with the truth. About <laughs> yeah, the as many people this did happen. did happen. I was by myself, so no one can prove it. But <laughs> I was I was stood in there, and I was waiting for my, my order. And every time the order number was shouted out, I always go, oh, like that, just sort of mess with them. <laughs> mess with them a little bit. I go, oh. Oh, that kind of thing. It got yeah, to if a I was point... working there, you were my worst nightmare. No, no, no. <laughs> it got to a point where the woman would shout the number and look directly at me and try and give it to me. Like she was playing along, she was loving it. Have banter with people in these jobs. Their jobs yeah. are pretty mundane, generally doing the same thing for a long period of time. They want a bit of fun. They want a bit of fun. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, and it's harmless fun. And it's, if, if, if it's after a night out and everybody else is drunk in there, then uh, anything goes, isn't it? Anything a goes. little thing on Mackey's, by the way, I've got some insider news on this. Oh, on. Do you know their muffins that they sell are from Frozen? Oh, are they? Yeah. I don't get Mackey's breakfast, but I've seen people eating them. And I'm no, like I, like a blueberry muffin. It's not necessarily like a. Oh, you know, not like an egg thing. milk muffin. Like no, a no, no. Pagan type thing. You mean so like, like a. a I don't know, yeah. they're blueberry muffins. Yeah. Well, I tried to get one because I heard I heard uh, from an inside source that works at Mackey's that they have a lot of things that are frozen, like the muffins get defrosted like, every day and that kind of thing. And I was like, I'm going to buy one to just see. And it was awful, to be honest. It was awful, these muffins. But yeah, I, was like, I didn't realise how many other things do they defrost from... I dread, like you a... know what? I, I dread to think what goes... I, I just feel like if I worked at Mackey's, I wouldn't eat there. Yeah, I mean the meat no, maybe, maybe that's from Frozen or whatever. But I just didn't think a muffin from Frozen. No, do you know what I mean? Like I just maybe I'm naive to what goes. Personally, on. I'm I'm going off it. It's a convenience thing, you know that where we go out in in, in Leeds is pretty close to a Mackey's, isn't it? So just, mm-hmm. in fact, both places where we've been over the years have been close to Mackey's. Yeah. It's just a, it's just a convenience thing, and they happen to be open at that time. Otherwise, it's it's vastly becoming for me something that i just i'm not bothered for anymore but the life hack there is um be be nice to people working mackies but also get cheaper zoom subscription yeah they call we it a little bit off track there didn't we going the, the original life hack is <laughs> kind of like taking your conflict to the very edge taking it as far as you can go in the hope that your enemy backs down which is actually a military tactic called embrinkment so mm-hmm. that's blackmail that's so a bit of embrinkment and then also be nice to people which is a good life hack i think in general Mm-hmm. Hashtag be kind. Yeah, especially if somebody's that. working at Mackey's because uh, they don't have much going for them. You said so. Yeah, it's perfect. Well, Monday the, is it? On to the next one. On to the next. I don't know. Some of the sites I've seen in there. Monotonous, you, isn't it? You know, it's bad when you have to have a bouncer on the door at Mackey's. Oh no! Yeah, there was a fight outside one recently. Anyway, yeah, onto your final one. Can you get your idea out, please? I'm thinking <laughs> for, a, for a beef burger. Anyway, <laughs> Do you look I've young? got two more studenty ones. I'm going to combine here because it's going to be the last one. This is your last one. Okay. So the first one's a classic one. Scientific facts, unarguable. Hang your clothes up in the bathroom while you're showering in order to get the creases out of them. It works, <laughs> it works every time. You save time on ironing. I've been in some uni houses where they don't have irons. And to be honest, even if you are not a student and you've got an iron, it saves you time. Just hang your clothes up. Bam. You don't need to. It's so hard ironing as well. I hate it. I barely do You're it. basically steaming the, the clothes, yeah. aren't you, I guess? And it, it works. It gets every single crease out. Almost. I'm going to try that because I do yeah. have a, a yeah, white yeah. top that's really creased at the moment. I'm going to give that a go tomorrow. I want a, I want a before and after picture. I want yeah, a before and after I've not heard about in this. In my all. DMs. Because good. it works every time for me. And most of the time, for most time I was at uni, I didn't have an ironing board. That's so a if shock. I ironed, if I ironed, I had to put, <laughs> blame the landlords, if I ironed, I had to put a towel down on a desk and then put the shirt over it and just go over it. The irons would be shit, they'd be terrible. And then I realised, I don't know, somebody probably told me, probably stolen it from somebody else, or, you know, all my good ideas come from, mm. uh, come from other people. Hang the clothes up in the shower, shut the door, steam, maybe let the shower run for, on warm for about a minute or two before getting in. Bam. It's a nice steamy atmosphere. Get in there. As soon as you get out, you don't need to do your ironing because there's no creases in your shirt. Bam. Formal dinner. Three courses. You know, stain the shirt a bit, but that's not why we're here, is it? You know, wash that's it. A decent, that's a decent bit of life yeah, advice. Not bad, a little high, life hack for you. Don't put it in the shower. Put it on like a hook on the door kind of thing. Put it on a hook after the door. If you've stained it, maybe put it in the shower. But otherwise, maybe. Give it a wash. Maybe. Just get a washing machine. Everybody's got a washing machine that everybody has an ironing board, as I've learned. Good point. 
second one that I've tied into this kind of practical universe. The old classic, you're making pasta or noodles, anything that you have to boil, actually, in a saucepan on the hob, right? But you've got other things to do as well. Maybe you've got a shower to get, maybe you've got a, a, a shirt to iron or whatever, you know? You might be doing these things. Maybe you've got to go for a shit, John Lewis, mm-hmm. right? Keep the pan boiling. You're thinking, oh, no, I can't leave the kitchen because what if the boiling water goes over the top of the pan? Wooden spoon across the top of the pan. I it heard about The this. water will never go over. Will never go over. I heard about this yesterday. Really? Yeah. And that wasn't from me, was it? That no. was from somebody else. I love it when those coincidences happen. Yeah. For the first time yesterday, I heard about this. Yeah, yeah. It never goes over. It's, it's absolute genius, especially like if you're like me and you're just boiling a pan of pasta in the kitchen, you probably will forget it when you leave the kitchen. Mm-hmm. It's absolute genius. It works every time. I've not tried that one. That, that is a really interesting one. I was meant to try it. I don't know if I've even got a wooden spoon, to be honest, but yeah, that's yeah. It's, it's, it's a kitchen staple, isn't it, really? Yeah, so and I think it has to be a wooden spoon as well. I can't think, uh, that I don't think it can be a metal one. I think it has to be a wooden spoon, but I don't know if there's some kind of physics going on there, whatever. I'll have to but look into that. I try it, but the first time you try it, Make sure you keep your eye on it just in case your spoon isn't compatible with this particular method of keeping the boiling water in the pan. You don't want to be held accountable for any mistakes that come <laughs> as a result of this, is what you're saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. With the fire safety going on in your flat right there, I don't want to be held accountable for boiling water going everywhere. But it's worked for me every time. And I've used various various saucepans and various spoons, and it's worked every, every time. And also, I got written in my notes of this, use pasta as a lighter what and that's not actually in fact yeah i do mean that because you know you ever had a candle right and it's in know. like a, it's in like a glass right yeah and the candle the candle burns down and the, the, what's it the, the wax the wax goes down with it and then suddenly you get to a point where you can't fit your hand in the little i wish i had a candle with me so i could demonstrate no you can't, I get, you your, you can't get your hand down the little cup that the, the candle the vase thing yeah yeah to light the candle but what I would do at uni when this happened, because I had quite a big, quite a big, sizable kind of vasy thing with a candle in, is I would light, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, I would light a piece of dry spaghetti. Oh, God. <laughs> right, the bottom end of it. Stick the spaghetti in the little cup thing down to the wick and light the wick. And it works. <laughs> and the amount of times, and people say, well, can't you just turn the... The, the vase, the holder, the candle holder, whatever, upside down and stick your hand in. And I go, no, if you're using a lighter, it goes all, it goes, burn your fingers, burn your fingers. Oh, so you're yeah. using like a cigarette yeah. lighter. Like an actual lighter. Uh, Instead of like a match or something like that. Or so you, you can get those, you can get those ones that are long and thin where you just yeah. sort of click the button. Yeah, that would also work, but we're on a budget. We Good had the pasta, the pasta was already in. Um, so I'd like the end. <laughs> You're going hungry that week, but you are you are nice and warm. Hey, it's just one. It's just one. Just one string of spaghetti dry in there. Bam! Let's get it down like that. People dry as opposed to soggy. On. Don't don't get a yeah. soggy spaghetti in there. People can see what, what what went on behind the scenes in my uni bedroom. Honestly, there would oh, be good. an inquest. So yeah, no, pasta yeah. antics. Well, we'll end on high. I'm I'm happy with that. That's decent. <laughs> we can always do a second one. I've got loads here. To be honest, I've got absolutely loads. So we will absolutely be able to do a second one of this. Uh, some life hacks here. Let us know what you think of this. I'll see a new thing we've not done it before. If you want to see a second one, let us know. Let us know which ones you like, which ones you're going to implement, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll see you next week for the year anniversary of the podcast. See you next Exciting. week. Cheers. Bye.